Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rocks. My name's Tracy. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this cute child scarf. Now I've not finished this off because at each end, I'm going to put a large pom-pom. Um, I've made the pom-poms already. There's plenty of tutorials on how to make them. So um, you can always watch one of those. Um, one of these days I may just do one, but for now i don't think i'm good enough at trimming them up to show you to be honest but i always leave quite a lot of tails when i've when i've tied mine together so that i can secure it so one of those is going to go on each end so i'm going to show you how to do this now this actually matches the child's hat that i made um, at the beginning of the uh, winter that I made for my granddaughter Sophia so um, this is going to go with it and um, I'll put a link at the end of this video um, when it when you get the suggested there'll be um, a link to the hat as well so there will be a left-handed and a right-handed tutorial um, for this I'm using a four millimeter crochet hook um, and I've forgotten to bring in the yarn, so do bear with me one second while I go and get that. Okay, so here it is. I'm using King Cole Melody, which is a double knitting, or DK for short, and also in the US it's classed as a three weight. Now this is shade 1566, otherwise called Eaton Mess. And it's 100 grams, you get 320 yards, 290 meters, and it is an absolutely gorgeous color. It's 100% acrylic. It's not the absolute softest yarn, but it's good enough to wear against your skin. It, you, wouldn't, um, you wouldn't think it was too rough for that at all. But it works up beautifully, self-striping, and the colors are dreamy. It really is lovely. It's like a fruit salad. Um, do you remember those fruit salad sweets? That's what it reminds me of. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Well, you need a couple of skeins of this because obviously the pom-poms do eat quite a bit of yarn when you're making them. You don't have to make them so big, but I wanted to. I put a large one, well, large-ish one on the hat, but I thought the scarf was um, would, would need quite a big one. So the size then, so... This is for a child who's five to six years old. I've used, as I said, a four millimeter crochet hook. You'll also need scissors and darning needles. And I have done 164 chain. Now what I always say when it comes to the length of a scarf, I always say that it is from that child's chin to the floor. So uh, that's the kind of length you wanna aim for. So this, as I said, has got 164 chain. It's not quite as long as that, but there is also this much at each end going to be part of the length. So um, I'm going to clear this all away now and uh, pause the video for a second while I get all that stuff out of the way and get ready to start the tutorial. So if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. You'll be informed when there are new videos. So I just... Uh, Pause it for one moment. Okay, so I'll make this nice and simple for beginners. You just need to make a slip knot, and you can do that however you normally would make a slip knot. But I'm going to leave a fairly nice long tail because, as I say, I do need to kind of cinch the ends of my scarf in and um, kind of pull it in so I can put the pom poms on. So, what I have always um, been taught to do when making um, a slip knot was to make a circle, make a loop, take the yarn behind it and just pull it through. Obviously you can make that slip knot however you want but I'll show you again. Make a loop, yarn back into the loop and pull it. So you just put in your hook and now we're going to chain 164. So if your child is younger or smaller then adjust your chain. As long as it measures um, from their chin to the floor, it would be a good size um, for the scarf. Now, you don't have to do extra chain for this. It's not that kind of pattern. So to do a chain, we yarn over and just pull it through the loop on the hook. Again, yarn over 
and pull through. Yarn over and pull through. And as you can see, we're making a chain. So yarn over and pull through. So I need to have 160 more of those. So I'm going to pause the video and I will come back to you once I have my, my chain length. Okay, so as soon as you have the desired length, now if you want to, if you feel that you're able to, you can actually go into the back bumps. So if you turn it over, you can see that there is a bump on the back of our chain and it gives you a nicer edge. So if you wanted to do that, you could. You just, we're going to do a half treble, which is a UK term, or a half double in the US. So if you wanted to just go into that back bump like that and yarn over, pull up your stitch, then that, you know, will give you a slightly nicer edge. But if you're not up to that, then that is fine. It's quite um, bi-coloured, this yarn. So it is a little bit more um, unusual to see but you can see there there's one chain there is another the loop on the hook doesn't count so we're going to ignore this first stitch and we're going to go into this one and we're going to yarn over and go into the stitch I'm not going to go into the back bump because it's just quite difficult to see but if you feel confident then please do yarn over and pull up the loop so we have three on our hook now we're going to yarn over and pull through all three, taking the yarn with you. So pull through all three of the stitches and that is how we do the half treble, which is a UK term, or a half double in US. We're going to do one in every single chain. So again, we're gonna yarn over, and we're gonna go into the next one, which is here. Yarn over and pull up the loop, yarn over, and pull through all three and into the next one now if you if you're using yarn like this you can easily see where your next chain is because of, you can see this one always kind of pulls open just a little bit so we're going in here so yarn over once again into the chain yarn over and pull up the loop yarn over and pull through all three and it's as simple as that that's all we're going to do for the whole length of this chain and in fact this is the stitch that we're going to be using for the whole thing with a little bit of a difference on the next rows so i'm just going to speed up a little bit yarn over you can see where you are into the next one yarn over and pull up yarn over pull through all three okay so i'm going to get you to do that in every single chain to, all the way until you get to the end I'm going to pause the video and I will catch up with you once we've done one in every single one along okay so I've done one in every single chain all the way along and I've got one more to do in the very last and what I'm going to do now is chain one and I'm going to cinch it right down. I just want to end that row off, but I don't really want any height from that. So let's move that tail out of the way, which is curling a little bit. Now I'm going to go into every single stitch all the way along and do the same stitch, but I'm going to do it in the back loops only. So if you look at the top, not this is the back of the work, look at the top you can see the V's for our stitches. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna yarn over and we're gonna turn it so that we're going into this back loop of our stitch only, not the front loop. So we're not going through both like we normally would. We're just going to go in the back part of the V. So we're gonna yarn over and go into that back one just the one loop, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through all three. And it's going to create a ridge for us, which will look like ribbing. So we're just gonna go in these back loops, yarn over, 
into the next one, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Now it will make this one look elongated, but don't worry, it pulls back into shape again. So I'm going to zoom in just a bit so that you can see a bit more clearly. We're yarning over and looking at it, here is our next V here. We're just gonna yarn over and go in that back loop. Yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through all three. And you can see this ridge here is forming because we're going in these back loops only. And we're gonna do that all the way along in every single stitch. And then when we get to the end, we're going to just chain up again, cinch it down and do it again. But we're going to be working in the back loops again. You can see the V there and there you're going into the back loops only. So that is our pattern. That is all we're going to do going into the back loops on every single row. And that's the, we're not going to do any other stitches. We're just keeping this half treble, half double in the US. Sorry, I'm still zoomed. I'm, I always kind of forget to unzoom it. So we're just going to carry on in those back loops in every single stitch. And we're going to just keep going every single row. And you can see the ridge forming. Now, we're going to do a total of 20 rows, and then I want you to have a look at it and see if it's wide enough, and if you think it needs a couple more, but I wouldn't go any more than 22 rows for a child's neck. If it's a very small child, you may even want to just do 18, but once you've got the width there, you can judge it. Um, that's That's all you can do, really, because children do vary in size quite a lot. But um, I'm going to pause the video now and I'm going to carry on until my work measures the desired width of a scarf. But that is, that's very basic and that's all you do. It's a half double US, half treble in the UK, in the back loops only for every single row. And the colour amazingly, does seem to do two rows um, of this scarf before it changes colour. So that does actually look um, like a couple of rows of the same colour. Now, of course, if you didn't want to use this yarn, if you didn't like working with one that's got two colours and you find it difficult to see the stitches, which just looking at it, it does. But you can see there, these are the back loops of your V. This is the front of our work. So it's the back of the previous row. And then you can't really see the V until you turn it. And you're looking down at the top of the stitches. And there's the back loops. So if you don't like this yarn, you could always do a couple of rows of a colour and then change it, change colour. So I'm going to pause it then and I will come back to you when my scarf is wide enough. Okay, so I just wanted to show you I've got um, how mine's working out. Like I said, two rows does seem to make um, the ridge that I need for the... This is one way and this is the other. So two two rows are making one nice colour stripe. So if I move that... I have now got 21 rows, I think. Let's have a count. Where are we? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 23 rows, sorry. I've got 23 rows. So it's an odd number. I do need an even number of rows. So I need to do one more and then it will be identical. So I've just got one more row to do. I did think it was a little bit narrow before, so I've done one more row. So yet again, just going in the back loops all the way along. 
and this will be my final row. I'm not going to do any other kind of border at all, just um, cinching in the ends and putting the large pom-pom on. That's all I'm going to do. But I think that, I don't think the ends um, really need any further border. Just need to pull some yarn out. But it's fairly simple. And also, I quite like this for, because for cold weather, it's not lacy and loopy. Um, there's not lots of stitches that are going to get caught up on things for a child. So I quite like it. And I think it's such pretty colours. And um, it does remind me of Starburst sweets or Tutti Fruities, you know, like um, the, the fruit salad sweets that you used to get when you were young so that kind of uh, it just reminds me of that it's just such vibrant colors and looks so so nice now the hat that I made for a newborn I did with this pattern but for um Sophia I made this um hat for her but I used a um UK double crochet which in the US is a single now you could do this with a single crochet um, or double in the UK. You could just do that, um, but it would take a lot longer, obviously. It's a smaller stitch and um, you would need more rows. But you could, if you wanted to do them absolutely identical, likewise, you could make um, the hat with this um, half treble, half double US rather than using the um the small um more smaller stitch of the double UK or single in the US. I need to pull out more yarn. It's getting near the end of the ball now. So Okay, so I think I'm going to pause it, otherwise it's going to be a little boring for you just watching me doing my stitches in my back loop. But as you can see, once you get going, it's quite simple to just pull it forward and find your back loop. It might seem odd at first, but once you once you do it, it becomes quite... Having said that, I just go wrong. But as you can see as well, you can see how it's making that rib effect it's kind of uh more looks more ribbed on one side than the other and it's like slightly different so i'm going to pause it and i will catch up with you when i get right to the very end okay so i've just done my very last stitch and i'm going to leave a very very long tail and i'm going to do my last bit and pull it through so now here we are we've got our end now I'm I've done one end just to show you this is how it's going to look so if I can just untangle it I've cinched it so that it it folds in on itself and the scarf's a nice long scarf and then you've got this pom-pom at the end and I'm going to show you how I did that it's a bit weighty so I'm going to try not to let it pull it down so with that one I just did a very long um, piece like this and doubled it over um, with this I was going to use these ends my pom-pom so heavy it's pulling it down Let's see if I can get it to out there um, I was going to use these ends but I won't I will show you with this because this is going to be extra strong so you just use a darning needle and I've got one with a nice big eye and you just thread all that thread all that up and double it having another extra couple of long tails is no problem at all because you do want it to be as strong as possible so now that's double thickness all the way along and all I have to do is make sure I'm getting it pulled the right way. So this is 
the width of my scarf sorry didn't mean to knock it okay so I want to pull it in this way okay so I'm going to just attach this very simply by just sewing it in to the first row I'm going to leave a nice long tail and then just tie it you're not going to see any of this so it's fine you don't need to be precise now what day why did I say I need that to curve I need it to curve that way so okay now we're going to just take our needle and we're going to over sew like this all the way along just like that going in to two stitches each time and then we're going to pull that tight making sure it curves the right way of course because we don't want any mishaps and we're just going to keep going all the way to the end just making sure that you go in get a nice secure piece of yarn now don't worry if it doesn't pull tall at first we're going to secure that in a minute and we keep going all the way to the end over sewing them like that and going into the very last one right so now we'll pull it as tight as we can and we need to find our two edges obviously that's the tail so here we are and that one I must have pulled that doesn't matter you won't see it so what I'm going to do now is tie that in a knot so it's curving inward there we are that's where it was tie it I'm going to tie it again for extra security now all of these ends don't matter and I'm just going to find my scissors cut them nice and long I'll get rid of the needle for now we'll need it in a second so I don't want to get rid of it too too well and put it over there right so now we've got both ends curling in the same way pop that over there for now we're going to get our pom-pom which I always have more than I should more than enough of these I do double thickness when I'm tying it of course you could buy your pom-poms that's perfectly fine so now this is a little tight I actually did this one very very tight but what I need to do is get these strands through here and for that I just poke my crochet hook through it's going to be difficult now because I have made it ultra tight and I just take two and pull it through so it goes through to the other side and then I get another two and roughly around those two can go over that way for now roughly into the center of my um, I'm do that very tight didn't do the other one it quite as tight but I need to get that so that it will go through easier said than done and grab this yarn and pull it put it through so that will be on the other side managed to get one the other one's fine I'll do it another place and likewise on the end get the other two so just need to get the other one I think that one needs to be pulled a little more tall. Take it out for a second. I've lost the end of that one. So many ends. So those two are already taut. And just pull on them until you find it. Easier said than done. Alternatively, I'm taking it. I'll take them out. <laughs> Just take them out. You can deal with these later. Just tuck them round there for now. 
It's the only way to do it, I think, is to get rid of them so you don't see them. And we'll start again. And we'll go in the end one. And don't want it. I, I can muddle through with that, but I don't think you will know what I'm doing. So that's why I started again. And I'll just get my two and pull them through like that. And I'll try not to make that move too much. Those ones are for the center. And there's, there should be another one somewhere. You get under there, out of the way. There we are, there's three. So that one can go with that one. And I'll do the center ones in a moment. Just get this end one sorted. And then I can tie them and know they're not coming through again. So I've just gone through. Oh, Michael, you can't see it, can you? There we are. I've done it again. I've called, I've gone through, grab these and pull them through. I know it looks awkward, but, you know, to be honest with you, it's the only way I know to secure them. And then you've got to get these ones through the middle here. But for now, I just want to get these and these two which have gone in so they must be somewhere there they are i think and i want to tie them i'm just going to pull them on the inside it doesn't really matter too much there they are so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tie these so they're not going anywhere they've gone through the scarf i'm going to tie them very very tightly and that way that's securing that pom-pom to the inside of here so i've done it on this side i did it in three spaces and you can see that's not going to go anywhere that is completely and utterly tied on so i have these other two and i need to get them in so i'm going to go into the center of my just pulling it apart popping my hook through grabbing my ends I'm going to pull them through. There we go. So now they're through. I just need to tie them too as well. So just grab any, any of these strands. They're all going to be hidden, so don't worry about them. Just grab them and give them a tie. And then we can just tie all of them to each other for extra security. Nice and tight. So what do we do with them all? It's quite simple. We threadle up our needle. And I usually do two at once. These are not the same length. So it might prove to be um, something that I shouldn't have done. But we'll see. And then I just go straight through the pom-pom. Here we go. And pull it through. And then I will just trim them off. I'll do it with these. Just make sure that's snug it is. There's nothing wrong there. I would have tied it again if it had been a little loose, just to make sure it's all snug. And then just pull those through. And straight through the pom-pom. And you can just about see it coming through. Give it a tug. And just do that with all of them. And all those ones that are on the inside there pull them all through and then once you've pulled them through you just get your scissors and trim them up and get rid of them like this and then you can go around and trim up any longer parts of the pom-pom that you missed like that I can see there's a little bit of a long bit there that I need to trim and get it all kind of nice. But I'm going to pause it for a moment while I get rid of all of these ends. I just need to feed them all up through there and trim them up. So um, I've shown you how to do that. So I'm going to pause it so you don't really need to see me do all of those. So just bear with me a moment while I get rid of those ends. Okay, so that's all on. They curve the same way. I think... I'll just check in, make sure I haven't left any ties behind. No, they're all they're all gone. So that's it. That's how I just need to go and um, go over this and trim off any loose ones like there that I find that are a little bit bit too long, and um, likewise this one. 
I'm not the best at trimming a pom-pom, I must admit. But um, I will give them another little go over and any little bits that are stragglers, I'll trim off. Trouble is I tend to trim and then I go too far in one place and then I have to trim the rest because I've trimmed one bit too short. But that's it. I hope you like it. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And um, I'll pop a link at the end to the hat, which matches. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time. Bye for now.